Da 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 da! We should do drum roll. Hi everyone, it's Lauren and I'm here today with Jean for the announcement of the next edition of the Feminist Orchestra 2019! So we had a really great first year. Yeah. Well, not first year, was it? Yeah, but. It was new, the new feminist work. Yeah, new and improved. New and improved. Um, so we read five books last year. Mm -hmm. We read. I'm not going to get this in order, but we read "Feminism Is for Everybody" by mm -hmm. Bell Books. Brick Lane. Brick Lane by Monica Riley. Mm -hmm. Oranges Are Not the Only Fruit by Jeanette Winterson. Train Wreck by Sadie Doyle. That's it. And Kindred by Octavia E. Butler, which the video for which we have just filmed and is over on Jean's channel. <laughs> so you can go and watch that now. Actually, not now. Watch this and then go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So as per last year, we thought we would relaunch the orchestra again in March and read five books again because we felt like that worked quite well last year. But before we get on to the books that we're going to read in 2019, do we want to have a little review of the year? Yeah, it's, reflect back. Yeah, yeah. Reflections of 2018. Yeah. So I pretty much loved four out of five of the books. Okay. Um, I, I think I'm probably about the same. Yeah. It's only one I disliked. I gave two of them five stars, which was Kindred and Orange is Not the Only Fruit, uh, both of which made it to my favourite books of 2019. I think Orange is Not the Only Fruit might now be one of my favourite books of all time. Really? Like, I adored that book so much. Um, and I think I gave Feminisms for Everybody and uh, Trainwreck four stars. I thought they were both very interesting. Um, and I didn't finish kid, um, Brick Lane. Brick Lane. <laughs> no, you didn't, did you? I slogged through. I'm really pleased to hear you say that you enjoyed Oranges Are Not the Only Fruit, though, because that's the only one I'd read. I'd already read that before we went into yeah. it. Yeah. Um, so it's nice to hear from someone who hadn't read it before. Yeah. And you really I'm so really glad. I think, like, I'm so pleased we picked the books that we did. Yeah. Um, even if one of them wasn't, like, a new favourite book, I'm still, like, feel like we covered, like, a nice uh, array of things. I think we did, and I felt I felt good when we were reading as well because when we're putting these lists together, mostly it's lists of things that we want to read, of isn't course. it? Really, because they, we we haven't always read them already, which is yeah. why when something like Brick Lane comes up, you're not going to chances know are you like it or not. Yeah. Um, so I think we did well. I was really pleased I'd read Bed Bell Hooks. Yeah, because I've never read it before. Sort of classic piece so, of feminist nonfiction. Yeah, yeah. Um, I really enjoyed Trainwreck. Yeah. I thought that was really interesting. Um, and Kindred, yeah. Again, oh, one of my favourite books that I read last year. I thought that was so good. And amazing. a few of those, like Kindred and Orange Is Not Only Fruit, are books that have been like sort of in the back of my mind read for a long, long time. And it was nice to read them in a discussion se um, scenario. Yeah, and have and an excuse to read them. Yeah, as well, like, yeah. You, but some books I think particularly you get so much more from if you read them in a context where you know other people are reading them at the same time, and then you can talk about them. You get so much more from them. So, what, so your favourite was Orange, you reckon? Is that number one? For you? Oh yeah, I mean it's because I loved Kindred as well, but if I had to pick one it would probably be Oranges. I, th I, I think Kindred has to be my number okay. one, I think it just has to. Well, I, I really enjoy Trainwreck though as well. Yeah, I, I really like King, train, Trainwreck, but there's maybe things I would have changed slightly about it. Yeah, to be fair. I think I, get, I think maybe you gave it four stars as well. Yeah. In looking at the books that we want to do for next year, we've followed a bit of a similar pattern in yeah. that we've got two fiction books, two non-fiction books, and one biography yeah. slash non-fiction-y type yeah. of thing. Um, so hopefully this will work well again this mm -hmm. year. So do you want to announce the first book, Jean? So how, how we're going to do it is we're going to start in March. So it'll be yes. March, April, yep. May, June, July, August. So I mean, you know how the months November, like. December. <laughs> so to kick things off, uh, our first non-fiction read of the year in March slash April. Uh, for each of these books there will be a special dedicated discussion thread on our Goodreads group which you can check out down below. Um, but we will be reading Dead Girls by uh, Alice Bolin. Yes. Uh, the subtitle being Essays on Surviving an American Obsession. And I think this is really fascinating. Mm. It's about how dead women, essentially, I, women's bodies have been used to further plots in mm. India and um, just about our fascination with the beautiful young woman yeah. then being killed and the story not really being about her, yeah, the story being prop. about her murderer yeah. or about the person who's lost her and then has to go and avenge her. Or, yeah. you know, it's, it's, um, or the detective solving the mystery. Exactly, like it, it moves men's plots on yeah. but it's about her death and yeah. so that yeah, yeah, and gosh, when you do think about it, you are just inundated with images of like dead girls, yeah, all over your television, and it's such casual like viewing. Yeah, it's it is odd now, and I love crime shows, 
Um, but it'll be really interesting to read a book that explores that concept. Yeah, um, I, I feel like this might be quite similar to Trainwreck. Yeah. In that it's giving you lots of examples of something. Yeah. Um, so that's a phenomenon like, in society. Exactly. Yeah. So looking forward to that. Then our next book in May slash June is going to be When I Hit You um, by Mina Kandasamy. Now I did read this book last year because it was shortlisted for the Women's Prize for Fiction and I I really, really loved it. I really so enjoyed excited. this book. And Jean's been wanting to read it for a while. Mm -hmm. um, but this one, actually, even though this is fiction, mm. this does blur the line of water biography a mm. little bit because this is about um, domestic abuse, domestic violence. And it feels like when you're reading it that it's a very, very literal mm. portrayal of Mia Kandasamy's situation with yeah. her husband. But it is... It is a supposedly fiction. Yeah. So I, I, I don't know how much of it's true. You don't really need to know no. how much of it's true. No. Um, but it is phenomenal. Yeah, I'm so excited. I've only heard amazing things about it. Um, so yeah, that'll be good. I feel weird smiling about a book about domestic violence, but I'm just excited to read it. Yeah, but that, that's what's so good. But it is it is enjoyable. It does yeah. bring, bring, bring you in as well. And that's what's that's what's so clever about it. Yeah. Because the thing with domestic violence is that it starts really slowly and sort of builds up and builds up and builds up. And that's kind of what your experience is, is like reading the book. Yeah. Is that you just get deeper and deeper into it. And before you know it, it's horrific and you yeah. can't get out. Sort of yeah. Thing. So... Yeah. In July, August, we are then reading our second non-fiction, which is a proper autobiography um, this time, and that's Audrey Lorde's uh, Zami, A New Spelling of My Name, A Biomythography. I'm not sure if she coined the word biomythography, but I'm interested. It feels like the kind of thing she would do. Yeah, probably. Yeah. So, um, I've read Audrey Lorde's poetry and essays in the past, and she was um, a black feminist poet. She was also gay and she explores that in her, her poetry and non-fiction as well. And uh, she died in the 90s from cancer, but she was pretty incredible and um, I'm excited to hear more about her life. Yeah, I've, I've read a couple of her essays, um, but nothing, nothing very, very long, yeah. like really in depth. So I'm yeah. really looking forward to this as well. Then for September, October, we're gonna go in a little bit of a different direction that we haven't done before and read some old school science fiction. So we're gonna read Ursula K. Le Guin's The Left Hand of Darkness. So this one is set on a planet with uh, where one lone human is visiting and everybody on this planet has the ability to just change their gender. Mm -hmm. um, so kind of gender in a sense has no meaning. Um, it'll be interesting to read about that kind of speculative of society. Yeah, I've not read any Ursula K. Guin either, mm. who obviously is a big yeah. sci-fi writer, but I like this one because it's sort of science fiction by a woman, which yeah. isn't a massive part of the, of the typical no, genre, the and canon. it's also dealing with gender as well, so yeah. I think it's going to be Yeah, yeah, I'm super excited, I think, like, I've been, I've been reading to this book for years, so I'm glad to finally be pushed to do it. Perfect, and then what are we finishing off the year so with? So then we're Jane? finishing the year off with... Virgin Envy. So we'll be reading this throughout November, December at uh, The Cultural Insignificance of the Hymen. And this is an essay anthology, so it has various different authors in it, not just one. We were saying when we were putting this list together that we really what like reading non-fiction that is about a very specific subject. Yeah. So we feel like this one and Dead Girls is not just let's talk about feminism in general, which yeah. I think can be quite difficult to pack into one book. Mm -hmm. It's like let's just look at one specific aspect yeah. of gender or sexism or yeah. so, you know something to do with society so totally and then this one obviously is exploring the whole concept of virginity and kind of how in a in a sense virginity is quite a sexist and heteronormative concept and mm. maybe does more more good more bad than it does good um maybe it's a bit of like a, a negative concept to continue and I again I'm just really excited. we've not read an anthology before actually no we haven't yeah so this will be interesting as well yeah. um, but different because uh, you might like some essays and not others yeah Let's think about anthologies yeah. um, <laughs> and it's interesting I hope it looks at sort of the concept of like this the sh concept of shame in yes as well yeah, I'm yeah. assuming that's what it's going to look at not just virginity and purity but also yeah sort of, you know what like that whole idea like of why that. it's like more pure and better to almost be a virgin or yeah. like women are more desirable when they're virgins historically and that kind of thing. Yeah, just general sexism related to sex. Ah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Bit of sex back in sexism. <laughs> so let us know if you've read any of these books, if you're excited about any of these books, we'd love to hear yeah. feedback from you. Yeah. Um, did you participate last year? What was your favourite? Ah, yes. Let us know what you enjoyed about last year. Yeah. Um, 
And also, it's, it's actually interesting knowing what kind of books you like reading, because yes. I think a lot of people enjoy the fiction, but people do seem to like the non-fiction as well, because yeah. it's bringing topics to people's attention that they didn't know before. Yeah, there's a lot of discussion um, around the non-fiction. Yeah, so I'd love to, we'd both like to hear yeah, what you think about these, uh, about these book picks, what you're most excited to read. And check us out on Goodreads on Twitter. Yeah, our Goodreads and our Twitter is going to be linked in the description box below. <laughs> so yeah, let's keep chatting in the comments. And we'll see you in our next video. Hey, bye! bye. It's our team mascot. Sandwich. I think Sandwich is a good mascot. Sandwich is a good mascot. Mm. She may be a royal corgi, but she is Republican. <laughs> she, she ran away from the palace no, she to join you. She doesn't like she doesn't hate the royals. Because like as individuals, there's nothing wrong, but she doesn't like the concept of monarchy. Oh, okay, good. So she doesn't think they should they should be in charge of anything or get our tax money. Okay. So it's just her, her ideals that led her to your flat? Yes. Instead of Buckingham Palace? Yes. Or I indoctrinated her, we'll never know.